Previously on the Adventure Zone, this doorway opens in the wall and three names appear above it. Antonia, Rowan, and Lord Artemis Sterling. Well, guys, I guess I'll see you on the other side. Hey, guys, uh, my name's Cam. Oh, I mean, I've been here for a long time, but I got screwed over. Um, but that's that's not important. This goes against everything, I believe. Well, uh, luckily, it's not your decision for sake. <laughs> all right. And they chose trust. Hell Yeah. Live from the inescapable depths of Wonderland, it's time for another round of Heart Attack, the heroic dating show. I cast True Seeing on Magnus. You see that red robe, and you just see this red robe put uh, a single skeletal finger to its non-existent lips. Fred not, dear listener. It's always darkest before the dawn. Unless, of course, you're locked in some sort of pain dungeon. It's the Adventure Zone! Madness? What does it mean to be a hero? He did just call me madness. Did it I? It sounded like madness to me. You definitely oh, no. said madness. Was that a clue? That was a clue, wasn't it? It was a clue. Uh, it was a clue. Start over. To second take. They put that one in madness. the blooper reel. Madness. Got it. Madness? What does it mean to be a hero? The two liches in front of you, who you can see in their, their true form, are still giving you the same prompt, Magnus, and you don't really know where this site is came from right because taco didn't give you a heads up but you you blink a couple of times and the true sight fades and i don't want to be a rules guy but he does have true sight for an hour so i do not know why that vision would be fading so quickly when i cast i cast correct <laughs> woo-ha woo-ha i've got you all in check i'm i'm gonna re- retweet that um okay but it's just gonna be a lot of kind of uh, yeah sure fuck it why not yeah, all right. You still got the true sight, and it's uh, it's still on you, and you have it for a whole hour, and you you just see this red robe, and now he's just kind of floating uncomfortably in front of you. His uh, his main <laughs> plan interaction. What shit we're gonna be doing in the next hour? I'm not gonna burn a a, a level six spell for your narrative. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Uh, okay. Yeah, you can still see this red robe then, and he's he's just kind of floating expectantly. Uh, uh, in front of you. And the, the two elves, who you still see as liches, thank you, Justin, for the clarification, uh, don't, mm-hmm. don't, don't seem to take notice of the red robe. Your answer, a Magnus. You know, if you'd asked me in my younger days, back 10 years ago. Or I, 15 seconds ago. <laughs> yes, that was the joke. Thank you, Dad, for filling in the punchline. Um, You're welcome. I would have told you that what makes a hero is is someone who acts. Someone who leaps into the fray without thinking. But you know, I've had some time to think now and I would say that I've I've grown a little wiser. And uh I would say that a hero is someone who acts when it counts. Acts at the right moment, acts when it's needed. Um with that you hear a um a little bell ring. Um uh, signaling the the end of this this game of heart attack, uh, and the audience applauds your answer, Magnus. And uh, there's a little music stinger playing you out. And the two liches say, um, "Well, it sounds like our uh, suitor has made their decision. Let's see who they chose for their hot date." And that this is exciting. And that screen beside all of you uh, drops to the ground, and the you can see the figure casting the silhouette. Um, it is another one of those marionettes, and uh, because of Taco's spell, it's still kind of shuddering and making kind of weird pseudo laughing noises. Um, and and really, it's just kind of like collapsed onto the ground, and one of its legs is just like uh, repeatedly lifting up and thumping down into the ground. Um, okay, let me. I have a question. I'm serious. What do Mag? I mean, what do Taco and I see? 
You see the same thing. Because he only cast you yeah, cast you true sight see, on Magnus. You see the same thing. The true sight kind of just made it so that Magnus could see through the blinding lights and oh, see like okay. who was in the studio audience. But you see, you all see this um, kind of okay. creepy display. Uh, and it's just not stopping. It's leg is just thump, thump, thump down into the ground. Um, and uh, uh, Edward says, uh, well, hmm. Well, we learned everything we need to know. So I guess let's call it a draw. Um, let's move on. This has gotten, frankly, a little too weird, even for us. Um, <laughs> and, uh, they, they, t- but I would have won, right? Oh, let's not, it's, po- it, it's like, who's line, baby? The points don't matter. Uh, yeah, but uh, I would have. And, uh, they, they turn to like go, but before they do, they say, oh, w- wait, we need to find out how your opponents in the last round of trust or forsake fared. Uh, and a sc- probably pretty fucking bad, huh? <laughs> and a screen uh, uh, appears behind the two of them, and it lights up, and you see three figures standing on a glowing square labeled "finish," and you recognize that they are on that board game that loaded into this room previously. Uh, it's it's all sprawled out behind them. And it takes you a second to recognize them because all of the sacrifices they've gone through here in Wonderland have, have changed them pretty dramatically. But it's the three adventurers that you met in the Felicity Wilds. Uh, it's Rowan and Antonia and Lord Artemis Sterling. And they look rough. Um, Sterling is the worst off. First of all, he's no longer like a young like boy man. Um, he's aged probably, it looks like into like his late thirties and his hair has gone an early bright silver. And he's also like, that's sev- a good look though, Griffin. Like, it's a I good know look. That you're but- trying to make him sound haggard, but like, no, he's a young silver. He's on some Malfoy shit for sure, but he's also severely injured. Um, oh. And That's a good look, you know? He's uh he's laying in Antonia's lap and she's trying to comfort him, but um she's she's not looking at him, like she's not looking down at him while she's she's doing so, and you realize she's wearing a bandage wrapped around her head that's just covering her eyes. Um and Rowan is standing and facing the screen, and he looks just withered up. He looks so worn down. You can see big patches missing from his big red beard. No, um, and you you can't hear anyone on the other side, um, but you can tell that Sterling is just like wailing, and this column of black smoke is just pouring out of him. And as Rowan recognizes you guys on the other side of the screen, you see him mouth the word clear as day. Why? I point at Taco, <laughs> <laughs> and then the screen shuts off. And how are y'all doing? I I haven't asked you that this arc. I feel like that was a good thing to know in the last one. Just like a quick che- a quick emoji check in with the boys. Uh, I don't physically feel great. Uh, I've I've had better days physically. Um, emotionally, I'm about over it. <laughs> From <laughs> yeah. just like a emotional perspective, I think I'm pretty well done with these people and these 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 creatures yeah Um, i would say magnus is kind of like physical taking a lot of like physical damage is is like magnus you know he's a tank it's his mo but like just like he's just being worn down psychologically by this shit and merle saying hell i'm okay how are you you lost the eyeball yeah, that's yeah. fair. Yeah, I know, but Except I- for continuing to run into door frames, Merle's doing great. <laughs> um, the 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 two elf liches, um, they seem to like notice that you guys aren't like having a great time. Uh, and Lydia says, uh, "You all seem pretty down in the dumps. How would you like a bonus round?" Um, uh, <laughs> I'm good, actually. Uh, it sounds yeah. Uh, Cam, sure. I like that about as much as a poke in the eye. Cam looks <laughs> Cam looks over at you, Taco, and he says, uh, uh, the bonus round is how I ended up getting trapped here in the first place. I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, yeah, like, no shit. Yeah, Head? dog. No You're kidding. You're not, like, uh, I'm telling like, us, so oh, what? It might this- be bad. Ugh. So it's the first part of this game to be uh, unpleasant. Excellent. Uh, <laughs> Edward is kind of, like, um, awkwardly, like, tapping his fingers together. He's like, it's Kind of not optional, though. Yeah, I also figured that. Okay. 
and uh, another pitch black door opens up behind them as they disappear, uh, and it leads you into the next chamber, uh, which I'm assuming you're you're popping into, unless you want to hang sure. out. And I mean, you can you can look around this this room more if you if you want. There's like I said, there's just a bunch of these marionettes just now all inactive. Uh, actually, they're just sitting completely stationary in these risers facing the stage, um, just just not moving. Uh, and they're they're these intricately made with uh, all these different points of articulation, these marionettes, but they have no face. Um, I take one hey, of their Magnus? arms. Yeah, I was, yeah, was going to say, take an arm, baby. Yeah. All right, I need to rebuild my collection. <laughs> sure, you uh, you pop off one of their arms, and now you have a wooden arm. Cool. Uh, and then I and then I slap the laughing marionette with the arm, and I say, pull yourself together. Uh, as oh. as you hit the laughing marionette, it stops. It finally stops moving. Let's go, guys. Yeah, we're following. Okay. Uh, in the next chamber, you're in another large circular room about the same dimensions as the the one you just left. Um, and in front of you are three large platforms. Uh, just not not very high up, about a, a foot and a half off the ground. Uh, uh, and each one has a huge multicolored neon sign hanging above it. Um, and one says escape game, one says healing game, and one says recovery game. And as you walk in, you hear Lydia say, um, oh, wait a moment. One of you has already played the escape game. And that pedestal dissolves into black smoke and wafts up into the ceiling. Um, and so you're just left with two platforms that say healing game and recovering game. And you hear Edward say, for the bonus round, you get to decide what game you want to play. Both are terrific little diversions, but this time you only get to pick one. So we have to assume that heal means we get healed and recover means we get to take something back that we gave up, I would assume. Maybe our, maybe our, but maybe just spell slots and stuff. Um, um, recover those. I don't know. Um, camp camp still looks like like kind of uncomfortable just being in this like bonus room decision chamber. Cam, which one did you choose? What happened? I I ended up I ended up playing the escape game. And, oh, good. And I well I I lost, and that's that's why I'm here. And ahead. how do you lose and- a bonus round? Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm I'm no games master. But a bonus round should just be winning. Well, it was a it was a bonus round for the person who won. It was it was kind of like the decision game. I came in here. I, I was hired to 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 guide someone in here, and I, we were doing well. We weren't doing very well. We made it through a couple rounds, and then uh, we played the escape game. And they made us an offer where if one of us betrayed the other, we could escape, but we'd leave the other one to be stuck in Wonderland to suffer eternally and i told her it was a trap i told her anybody who left this place alone wouldn't survive 10 minutes in the felicity wilds but she took the offer and well here i am this this person you were guiding older lady yeah but i mean she got older while we were here yeah yeah right yeah okay right Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay wait do you know do you know do you know lucretia just a guess yeah, we do. We're kind of working for, her, basically. So she trapped you in here too. She sent us in to save you. <laughs> she, wait, she sent yeah, you. In, we're here to. She sent you in to save me. Sure. Holy man, Res, rescue oh, mish. Yeah, yeah diehard rescue mish. We're here for you. You see, like uh, tears start to well up in his eyes. Uh, and you should probably stay hydrated because I don't think you can drink water. <laughs> He's kind of speechless. Uh, he says, uh, maybe I was wrong about her. I, I, I don't know that I can escape anymore. I, I, I'm pretty sure well, the no, only they reason. Well, no, took the pedestal away. Well, no, it's not just that. I mean, I'm just a, I'm just a head. I'm pretty sure it's this place that's keeping me alive in the first place. But that, that means a lot. Thanks, guys. You just, you hear, you just hear Edward just go like, <clears throat> yeah, let me be a coach for a second. Look, we're not going to escape. Right. I say we go for heal, right? The stuff we've given up, we gave well, up our own okay. free will. Let's get healed up. We're not going to get healed any other way. But but yeah, hold on. If I, I might counterpoint for a second, 
Cam makes it sound, and Cam, please correct me if I'm wrong, makes yeah. it sound like only one of us will get and the other will lose. Maybe. So you, you hear it, uh, Edward say. So it sounds like in the heal chamber, maybe like one of us gets healed, but the other two lose hit points. That would be fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, talk, Taco's down to like a decimal point we something. Could, we could make that work. Yeah, I say you know what? Anyway. Now that you mention it, I'm still doing pretty good. So, like, sure, let's do it. Heal. Yeah, let's go to the healing room. Okay, you all step up onto the healing platform, and as you do, a ripple of light uh, emits from the platform, and everything and else in the room disappears. As uh, the light comes down, Taco is hit by the realization that there's a possibility this room could test the healing abilities of our party, and he's hit with a deep existential dread. <laughs> Just like a, a mortal panic. He basically like tries to get off the pedestal and things just can't in in time. Um, talking about me, aren't you? Uh, and, I, I guess I should also ask Ditto. Um, yeah. Do I see anything before, like, let's retcon a second. Before we step on this platform, does the true sight reveal anything? Huh. I'll tell you what, that's a good, that's a really good question. Yeah, your your true sight showed you when you walked into this chamber, Magnus, and it's something the other boys didn't see, um, is that for like a, a split second, uh, everything in this chamber was just black smoke, like the same black smoke that you've seen uh, that, that pours out of you when you have a bad time. Um, it was just black smoke, and then it kind of like firm firms up, almost like a... Uh, you know how popping pop in works in video games when you're like too far away from a thing and then it's just like boop. It, it was it, it's kind of like that, um, and you were the only one that kind of saw it. It was like the contents of this room like had to load in for a second. Gotcha. How's that? Um, so this light ripples throughout the room, and um, all of a sudden, the three of you are all standing in front of. Uh, a, a little pedestal with two buttons on it. And the buttons are labeled with the other names of the people in your party. Um, so, Taco, you're standing in front of one that says Magnus and Merle, and so on. And you hear Lydia explain. Oh, and there's, like, there's like bright, uh, like, neon trim lights running all uh, around the room. And the words healing game uh, are, like, floating in a big sign between all of your pedestals. Uh, and uh, Lydia says, um, we know some of you are fear faring a little bit worse than others, so we thought we'd give you the chance to balance out some of your current states of physical well-being. So in the healing game, we'll allow you to transfer some of your vitality over to a friend. But in doing so, you will experience a bit of energy degradation during the transfer, so they'll only receive half the vitality that you send in their direction. So... In the healing game, you can give another person on your team some hit points at the cost of two to one. And how many hit points does Cam have to give to Taco? Uh, this is a great point. Okay, Cam also has a little pedestal, uh, uh, and it has all your guys' names on it. And you got you all have a pedestal that has Cam's name on it. And he's like, I'm going to be honest, I'm just ahead. So uh, I don't really have a lot to give or receive. So if I'm I'm probably gonna abstain from this this challenge. I'm actually good to go. I'm full of hit points. There's just like four of them. <laughs> All right. What are you well, down to, Taco? Fourteen. I'm at like seventy five. Okay. Even though there's some internet discrepancy, I maintain I'm at seventy one. So I'm gonna give. Uh, do I hit the button of who I want to give it to? Uh huh. All right, I hit taco, and I give forty. That would kill you. No. Oh, you no. give it. You're so he's getting twenty. Right. Oh, okay. I thought you were saying you're giving him forty, so you were subtracting eighty. That would be a fun way for Merle to go. Um, by just by oh, pressing the ultimate the heal. Bit. Yeah, he fun the for ultimate you. heal. Yeah. Now who can't heal? Dead. <laughs> uh, all right, taco heal twenty, and Merle take forty points of damage. Okay. That's Mag golden brassy. Magnus? Uh anything? Taco, what's your what's your max? It recently uh, it recently went down. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I am currently at 34, and my max is 49. Um, Holy I don't shit. see what that's just real low. Is it? Is it Griffin? <laughs> is, it, is it? Is it real low? Is it almost like some fucking liches of your imagination sucked my hit points away from me, a wizard? Is that what happened? Is yeah, that what weird. may account for the lowness? It's really, it's like real low. It's like so crazy low, huh? <laughs> it's just super weak and low. It's all I could think about. Yeah. Uh-huh. I kind of feel like, so I feel like I want to do like that guy in the office that when everyone starts like collecting for charity, you don't really want to give, but you also don't want to be the only one who doesn't. So I'll give, I'll give like 10 of my hit points to give Taco five. That's also like 10% of Taco's <laughs> health though. So... Uh. All right, you just you just lightly tap the taco button. I mean, I need okay, like on, guys. Like, I don't know what just happened, but I had a skin knee and it healed over. <laughs> but like my job not is the, to get not hit. The, Taco's not job is to way. stand in the back. It's still red. It's not healed up completely, but like it's definitely somewhat healed. There's, there's still a little, a little raspberry there. Thank you for whoever was so kind to donate that. Um, you know, it averages out that like. We gave you 12 and a half points each. Uh, as a, no, no, it doesn't really. As someone who has taken a lot of shit over being a bad healer, I don't think it averages I just out at healed all. and I'm the tank. So who's the best healer, really? You know, How you're much supposed did you to heal. heal? How, you, you did a knee. Um, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm a gonna very say, like, important knee. While all this is taking place, just a little bit of that smoke is coming out of you guys <laughs> as you have this yeah, argument. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, right, yeah, fine. that's fine. That's fine. Um, and Th- it, it, thank you to everyone who gave an average of 12 and a half hit points. I really appreciate it. Uh, hey, and least we could do, buddy. Um, and t- uh, Magnus, you actually see that red robe uh, who has sort of been shadowing you from behind. He floats uh, into the, the middle of the three of you, and he, he sucks up a little bit of that black smoke. <laughs> tasty, tasty. Uh, and uh, joking aside, like Taco, you looked fucking pretty bad uh, because it's still from that washing machine that fell on you. Uh, but you're you're actually looking a lot better. Like your wounds really have closed up a bit. Merle, on the other hand, you um, you actually have started to look a little bit bad now. Um, and Magnus, you also have a skin knee. You, and you feel it, and it's. And can I say something? It stings. Doesn't feel he good. Shouldn't have. Uh, shouldn't he have two skin knees? Uh, yeah, that's a great point. You have two skin knees because or of the two it to just one. Be that one of the skinnings is twice as big. Nope, you got two skin knees. Yeah. It's a. It's a really good look. Um, and uh, with that, the uh, lights in this room kind of shut off, and a, another door opens up in the back of the room. Another pitch black door. Let's do it. I'm, am I, I, Griffin, am I safe to assume that I'm seeing a lot of, like, and the black smoke starts to fade in this room and form a new room kind of thing? Yeah, actually, you see the inverse as you leave this room. You see it, like, start to unload a little bit. And then as you, as soon as you uh, walk into the next room, uh, you see it s- sort of fade in uh, just, like, a second too late. Um, and it is another room with, with, I mean, it's not another room. It's the same room with that big old wheel of sacrifice in the middle of it. The wheel, I wanted to call it the wheel of misfortune, but I think that was an old Animaniacs goof. No, that was wheel of morality. Wheel of morality. Damn it. You're right. Um, but yeah, the three of you, uh, with Cam walk into the wheel room and, uh, you see, the same big stone door on the far side with four dots over it uh, that are sort of a dim red. And it's the same old wheel. And you hear Edward say, hey, this is a wheel of sacrifice. You guys know the score. Just really spin it around, fill up the dots. <laughs> it's like one of those disclaimers on the auto ads. Um, uh, and you hear Lydia say, um, Edward, can you... Take this seriously, please. This this round, uh, as you might expect, the sacrifices will be a little bit more intense than they have been. But I know that the three, well, the four of you have it in you. I didn't. I didn't expect it to get worse. Ugh. I kind of did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a glass half empty. A little bit of smoke. Oh my! A little, little bit of smoke came out of Taco with that. All right. All right. You got to stop going Eeyore on us, man. Yeah. Uh, so who's gonna go first? I'll do it. Are we doing it four times again? Yep. Yeah. 
Magnus spins. Swords. Awesome. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. Phenomenal. Uh, Magnus, you hear Edward say. Mmm, perfect. Magnus, if you choose to accept this sacrifice, you will lose a fight. <gasps> Lit- literally, you will lose a fight. You will have a fight taken from you. Hmm. What do you say? Uh, well, you know, uh, this is one of those circumstances. I'm going to say this one's not going to be up to me. Uh, Taco, Merle, Cam. Um, this sounds like it's more you guys having to fight a fight without me. Oh, no, uh, I'm, th- so, I'm sorry. I think he's talking about a past fight that you fought. No, 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 you misunderstand. You won't have to uh, leave your friends in the lurch and have them fight the fight themselves. The fight itself will be lost. It will be just gone. It will never exist. You will have the glory of an important battle uh, just stripped away as that battle simply won't exist. And remind me what happens if I say no? Penalty. And, and a Sorry, penalty I, was, is... I, had a, I had a mouthful of coffee. Because <laughs> you, you sounded very Eastwood there for a second. Yes. You know what? Bite my butt. I'm taking the penalty. Wow. Okay. Uh, as you say that, you hear Lydia say, Wow, I'm, uh, I have to admit I'm pretty disappointed. I had a pretty good one. Uh, lined yeah, up for you Yeah, that's why I figured you seemed very excited about it. Um, and so, you know, I, I just wanted to have a moment where I felt in control for a second. Okay, well, you're in control. And you see a fifth dot appear over the door in front of you. Well, dump. A little, <laughs> a little bit of smoke comes far- Oh, hey, you know, not so bad. That looks good. Actually, you know, now well, that you I love, think about but, it. But I will, I will say this. You love fighting, huh? You just I do love, love fighting. Well, okay, listen, though. What if that was a fight, like that was a boss battle to, like, save someone's life that they took away from us? You know what I mean? If they yeah. say it was a similar fight to us, us fighting the Raven, like, you know what I mean? Like, that could have destroyed yeah. a whole town, could have ended the world. And you wouldn't have gotten credit for it. Uh, you hear you hear Edward say, uh, "Lucky you! You get to participate. You get to be in Wonderland even longer. You get to play the wheel game even more. This is I, th- th- I said penalty. I should have said super prize. That is great. Yahoo! Here we go. I'm spinning the wheel, and it's stopping on mind. Oh man, <laughs> Merle, mind is a tough one." Um, you've already lost some uh, important memories uh, to the wheel in this game. And for this third round of the wheel game, we're going to take some doozies from you if you accept it. So <sighs> if you accept this sacrifice, Merle, you will lose the memories of the birth of your children. Take the penalty. Merle's got kids? Imagine my shock. Merle's a deadbeat dad. <laughs> a gag. A gog. I'm aghast. I'll take the penalty. As nurturing as he is, you know, as unwill... Oh, I guess I can't talk yay about him anymore. He gave me a bunch of hit points. Yeah, it's real bad. Uh, can't believe it. And with that, a six dot appears above the door. And you hear Lydia say, well, this is... um." You boys may want to get comfortable in there because it seems like you might be in it for a while. I'm spinning the wheel. Hand. Hand. Uh, Let's see. With hand, we will take away some of your mm, capabilities. Um, Taco, you are an accomplished wizard, but you also have a, a, a certain other special knack that uh, that few wizards can claim. Uh, you can do sick flips and sweet tricks. And um, I think we're going to take some of that away. And if you accept this sacrifice, you're going to take a, take a hit to your uh, dexterity modifier as you become less, less, uh, less skillful, less acrobatic of a wizard. 
Damn. I mean, the hard one for me about this is I've made such good use of my acrobatic skills. <laughs> at this point. It practically defines the character. Yeah. Yeah, I'm fine. All right. You, uh, you, you step forward to like touch the wheel, and as you do, you kind of trip uh, a little bit. <laughs> As, wah, wah, wah. Um, so what's your what's your dex modifier, Taco? Uh, three. Yeah, no. Well, it's it's a sixteen and then plus three. No, it's a plus one. Okay. Uh, this, that's gonna hit your. That's gonna hit a lot of stuff, probably. AC initiative. You need to. Ch- are you changing? You're not changing my modifier. You're changing my. Oh yeah, the, whatever the score bumps it down to a plus one. I think that's a. 12 well, maybe I just made it 126 that's not that 126 is not that would be a crazy sacrifice to me all right uh magnus is gonna spin all right do 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 body oh man uh body we've seen before in past rounds although i'll admit it's gonna hit you the the party's uh main defender uh much much harder than it did your your accomplice uh, by choosing body, you will have a significant amount of, of your vitality drained from you, Max. I accept. Okay. Uh, it's going to take 20 off your max HP. You're good? Yep. <laughs> All right. Now that's just, wait, 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 wait. Off the max HP? Yep. I mean, uh, listen, my max HP is 111, so that drops me down to 91. I'm still doing fine. All right, you walk up to the wheel, and just how you saw it happen to Magnus earlier, or happen to Taco earlier, you just feel some of your vitality like drain from you, and you get kind of a like a sour feeling in your stomach, and you feel like a really harsh, like cold chill kind of go through you. I'll do some crunches later and get it back. Um, <laughs> uh, now we have I two lights. Again. Up, two lights up over the. Oh, okay. Skull. With Skull, you're going to have a spot of bad luck in the future um, mm-hmm. if you if you accept Skull. Well, I'm having plenty of bad luck now. I accept. Spin again. <laughs> All right. Magnus is just going beast mode. Hold on. And I'm mind. I spin mind. Oh, man. Oh, Trav. I could hurt you so bad with mine, though, bud. I know. How do I want to get you? I have two ways to fuck you right now, Trav, and I'm trying to decide which one's the best one. One's hard. One's real bad. I'm not going to do that one. I'll do the next one. Magnus. Uh-huh. You have someone that you loved once, right? And they were taken from you by someone who you now hate. I wonder which one would be worse to take from you. The person that you loved or the person that you hate. I think we'll go with... The latter. If you accept his sacrifice, you'll f- you'll forget Governor Kalen. You'll forget all about him. You won't be able to track him down. You just won't know anything about Governor Kalen. You'll forget what you'll f- you'll remember what he did to you, but you will not remember who did it. I whisper in uh, Magnus's ear. I don't know who that is, but that sounds chill as hell. <laughs> I mean, right? Like. Just let go and let go, my man. Finally, you can get your mind. That's what, uh, that's what this per- whoever the person is, the- I'm sure that's what they'd want, right? Yeah. Get on with your life. Get on with your life. What a gift. You know, here's the thing. Wait a minute. So those are the terms? Yep. Uh, Magnus. Uh-huh. Tell me what happened. I, I'm sorry. I see what you all are doing here, and we've been running Wonderland for long enough. He won't be able to remember no matter what. You can tell I him the story or whatever, but uh, it's, that would be a shitty sacrifice, don't you think? That's all right. I saw Memento. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Here's what I'm going to say. Merle. Taco. Yeah. Don't try to remind me of it. But if in your journeys you ever meet a slimy asshole named Governor Kalen kill him on sight. Don't talk to him. Don't let him talk to you. Kill him. And tell him it's for Julia. That's the one thing I want you to say to his face before you kill him. This is for Julia. Then you end him then and there. And Understood? Then loot, and then loot him for you Julia. You do whatever the fuck you want after that. 
Yeah. Well, listen, we kill most of the people we come in contact yeah, right. with anyway. Statistically Perfect. speaking, so, we're probably going to kill him eventually. Deal so. made. Con- yeah, deal confirmed. Accepted. And just like that, like Magnus's quest for vengeance just ends. And, and ours begins. <laughs> <laughs> You're at four out of six lights. Uh, I'm spinning. Go I'm for spinning. it. All right. Let's see. Oh, sorry. Gotcha. We'll we'll bring it that, was, big wheel. that was real cool, Magnus. Yeah. Hey, thanks. What was? <laughs> <laughs> Merle spins swords. Hmm. Come on. Come on. Give it to me. The problem with swords for you, Merle, is you're just not a very... <laughs> I haven't won any fights. Yeah, you're not a very combative person. Um, One moment, please. Who killed the spider in our very first adventure? The big, hairy I, spider. I know I wasn't there for that, so I'm not sure. Um, well, yeah. In, inst- I'll, I'll change it, because I don't know that you have any big, glorious battles in the future uh, oh, that me. I can take away from you. Uh, a little bit of smoke comes out of you when you say that. Uh, but um, how about this? In your next battle here in Wonderland, you're going to be a real dunce. Uh, and if you accept, no, but this, what's his punishment? Yeah, but well, what? No, but then what happens after? Yeah. If you accept this one, um, every everything you uh, do in the next battle here in Wonderland, you will have disadvantage. Accepted. All right, five out of six. You will, wait. You three accepted, are, you pricks. A little bit. Oh, of that. That's good. Make more black smoke. Uh, a little All bit right. of that smoke, and uh, again, you see some of it get peeled off, and Magnus, you see. You see that red rope just eating it all up. I'm going to spin the uh, uh, the wheel now. Clock. Oh, taco. My sweet taco. What's up? How do elven ages work? I thought you've been run- running Wonderland for a long time. <sighs> this and you're elves. This is Griffin, this is Griffin asking. Or aren't they? How about this? How about this? How about this? How about this? We'll even abstract. I'll take it from the... I'll take it. I got another thing. Taco, you are uh, you are of, of the elven people, and a good-looking one at that. And so taking time from you is a tricky prospect, because elves can live a long, long time. And we don't want to establish a discrepancy in the sacrifices that we demand from our participants. So instead of taking your age from you, mm-hmm. what if we sort of take away something that diminishes over time? Which is to say, some of your beauty, Taco. I wonder if you would accept a a sacrifice that uh, uh, deals a hit to your vanity like that. If you take this, Taco, you'll just become slightly less of of just a beautiful young elf man. Can he choose what part of him is not as attractive? Will it, will, will it, ma- okay. <laughs> so, like, I'll go from sort of uh, feminine, ethereal, be- ethereal beauty to more like um, sort of a craggy Richard Burton kind of <laughs> handsome kind of thing. More of a Richard Karn esque beauty is what we're That's talking way about. too beautiful, Griffin. Choose again. More of a Richard Linklater. No, he looks good. Oh, damn it. <laughs> he looks good. He looks fucking good. <laughs> I love that it, you were just like, oh, yeah, my fucking uh, agility in battle? Fuck that. No way. But my beauty? Hmm. Well, you have to understand that, like, for Taco, it's not just vanity. I mean, it's like the the way he sees himself is as a television personality that has been disgraced but will eventually... Uh, come back, not like television, but you know what I mean, Um, uh, who will reclaim his rightful place. Right. Um, And that, 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 this is counter to that. Hey, I'll take another spin. If you do that, you would have two spins because you would lose one. That's how the penalty works. How, like how bad? (laughs) How ugly? I'll put it this way, Taco. For the first time in your life, you will simply look normal. You will be plain. 
Uh, and you hear uh, uh, Edward say, well, that's a fate worse than death if you ask me, but Taco, it's your sacrifice to make, bud. I just don't... I know I need to make a decision here. <laughs> it's just, you know... It's a tough one, right? You say to to one eyed Merle and Magnus, who just forgot the no, listen, killer listen, of listen. his. Everybody's battles are their own, and yeah, but I, like, I'm not going like, to sit there and tell tell Taco that his struggle is worse or less than mine. I Taco's realize also how not hard a good they, person like Taco's not yeah, a good person. <laughs> like, I know Taco well far. enough at this point to understand how hard this must be for him. I understand if this is too much, and I'll take two spends. If you need to say no. Listen, I've thought about it a lot. And uh, as near as I can figure, normal taco is still head and shoulders above 90% of the population <laughs> of this stupid planet. So let's go ahead and go normal. You instantly are changed. And you don't feel it. And Merle and, and Magnus, like, Ugh. no, he still looks like he's not unrecognizable, right? He still looks like Taco, but like, st- there's, there are, there are differences that you just because you've traveled with him for so long, you can kind of pick out just like, you know, his lips aren't as full and his What's eyes the aren't as soft. Of je ne sais quoi? He's got the je, je ne sais quoi. And- I cast a sky self on Taco. <laughs> to make myself look like old taco and instantly <laughs> <laughs> except i still see normal taco except he still sees normal taco with this true sight oh dear god this is getting confusing yeah it sure is uh okay taco you are you're beautiful again but you're gonna have to keep burning that spell uh in order to keep yourself that's great you have fucking arcane cosmetics now this is the best game ever made <laughs> with that the six dot opens up uh, the six dot turns green and the big stone door opens up uh into the next chamber Shit. griffin that- where's the where's the red robe right now uh, the red robe is floating towards the door and motioning you towards it all right let's go boys uh, and as, as they, they step through the doors and as they do, the red robe leans down and you can like see the red robe doing this now. And it extends a skeletal finger and prods it into your palm and makes a mark in it of thieves can't. And it's a symbol that thieves use to let others know that it's going to pop off soon. Cool. It's fun. You move into the next room and it's another big circular chamber and it's the trust or forsake room. And you step in, and you don't even get a rules explanation this time. I think that Edward and Lydia just assume that you know what the deal is. But these rings of light are emanating from the platform in the middle of the room. Uh, and the screen on it spins, and the uh, the face that pops up on it, I'm just going to say, because I, I rolled for the other two, but um, I, I just want everybody to get a turn on it. Magnus, your face, your pixelated uh, caricature of your face appears uh, on the pedestal. And you hear Edward say, uh, you know what's up, right? If if things yep. work in your favor, you can breeze right through the next challenge or you could face your doom. It's up to you, Magnus. Uh, have at it. And as I stare at the buttons, the sad face of Rowan appears before me saying the word, why? And I look at Taco. And what is Taco doing, Justin? Taco, you you see before her the sad face of of Taco, and stop it. <laughs> then Taco mouths, because I would have died. <laughs> <laughs> and I look over at Merle. And what's Merle doing? Picking his nose. And I look back at the button, <laughs> and I see the face of Julia. No, I hit trust. Okay, Son of a bitch, stupid. You hit trust. And uh, the same sort of display appears in front of you again. And it says, you chose trust. And it says, they chose. Do you have a two-sided die? (laughs) Uh, No. It's called a quarter. They also (laughs) chose trust. Hey. Both parties chose trust. And you you hear uh, Edward say, oh, okay. Sorry, this just like never happens. And the door on the other side of the room slides open. Let's go. Uh, Let's go. 
Okay. Yeah, because you both chose trust, you play the easiest version of the challenge ahead of you. Uh, it's, I mean, it's still going to be tough, but, you know. Can we win something this arc? Boy, let's see. Uh, you move into the next chamber, and uh, it's another huge circular room. And you realize as you walk in that the walls and floors and ceiling of this room are all made out of this really detailed screen, like an almost like an LED screen. And it's showing like these scenic vistas, almost like it's in like screensaver mode. So as you walk in, like this, this screen makes it look like you're standing in a big tropical beach. Um, and then it looks like you're standing in a smoky forested mountain. And then it looks like you're standing next to a babbling brook. Um, and at the far end of this room is a pile of bodies. But as you approach them, you realize that they're not dead folks. They are more of those wooden marionettes. And it's the, they're the same types with the, they're intricately carved with all the different points of articulation and no faces. And as you enter the room, the screen around you goes dark. And you hear Lydia say, this challenge is going to be fun to watch. Say, are any of you feeling particularly nostalgic? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I long for the time when we weren't in this place. Yeah, uh, sure. And uh, Merle, as you say that, a bit of black smog comes out yeah, of you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and it joins a big cloud of black smog that lowers down from the ceiling. And this cloud like sucks up some of the mannequins from the pile. And then all of a sudden, uh, this, this cloud takes the form of a massive red dragon. Um, and the screens around you are displaying what looks like a dragon's like horde, like a dragon's cave. Uh, and you can see some of the, the mannequin shapes like floating in its semi translucent skin, but it looks and it sounds so real, but then it changes shape and some of the mannequins fall out of the cloud and it transforms into a hill giant holding a massive club. And all of a sudden you're standing um, in the, the ruins of a castle on a hill uh, that, that, that the screen is showing you. And then the shape dissipates and then it reforms, sucking up more of those mannequins from the back of the room. And all of a sudden it's a floating beholder uh, with all of its uh, different eye stalks uh, glowing with different colors uh, and uh, two mannequins raise up from the floor and all of a sudden they're surrounded by black smoke and they transform into mind flayers. And all the while, like while you're seeing these different scenes and this shape is transforming into different monsters, a word is circling the room uh, on that screen uh, that says calibrating. And after a few more of these transformations, all the mannequins fall to the floor and the screen surrounding you lights up and it makes it look like you're standing in some sort of cavern. Only... The walls of the cavern are giving off a faint glow. And then a bunch of mannequins are picked up off the ground and absorbed by the smog, and it starts to take shape. Uh, and you see eight long black legs with a thick body and two sharp pincers and a long stinger uh, up here out of that smog. And one of the mannequins just stands up from the pile and is encircled with smog, and suddenly that one is holding a smooth staff, and it's wearing a fantastic robe emblazoned with a spider. Brian's! And then those two figures come to life and start to march towards you as three words appear on the ceiling on the screen. And they say, Boss Rush, begin. Hey, this is Griffin McElroy, your Dungeon Master, your best friend, and a real human being and a real hero. Thanks for listening to episode 55 of The Adventure Zone. It's the fifth episode of the Suffering Game arc, which I intended to keep pretty short and tight, um, but it's it's getting away from me again a little bit. It'll still be a little bit shorter than the other arcs. Uh, and uh, yeah, thanks for listening. I, I hope you're enjoying it. I hope it's not causing you too much anxiety. I promise it's going somewhere. Uh, I have a few sponsors to tell you about this week. The first one is Nature Box. Nature Box is wonderful. What they do is they send you a bunch of snacks that taste great and are better for you. You you go on their website and you choose which snacks you want, and they come in a box made of nature. 
It's all high-quality ingredients. They're free from artificial colors, flavors, or sweeteners, so you can feel great about snacking. Uh, I almost always have a bag of some Nature Box snacks of some variety in my cupboard. Pop them out, chew on some some dried pineapple, chew on some uh, some raspberry whole wheat figgy bars. I'll chew on some uh, salt and pepper pop pops. Uh, I always got those in my in my snack holster. And right now, you can save even more. Nature Box is offering Adventure Zone fans 50% off your first order when you go to naturebox.com slash adventure. That's naturebox.com slash adventure for 50% off your first order. Do not sleep. Naturebox.com slash adventure. Also, I want to tell you about another thing that I love, and that's Blue Apron. Made me a Blue Apron last night. It was an African spiced chicken with peanut sauce thing, and it was ballin' as hell. Uh, they send you a box of ingredients that are uh, fresh and high quality, and they send you a recipe to tell you how to turn those ingredients into a really, really, really tasty meal. Uh, upcoming meals include seared pork chops with farro and cranberry chutney, spaghetti squash and marinara with mushrooms and garlic knots, and uh, spicy shrimp and Korean rice cakes with cabbage and furikake. Uh, it's affordable for less than 10 bucks per person per meal. Blue Apron delivers seasonal uh, recipes along with pre-portioned ingredients to make delicious home-cooked meals. And you can check out this week's menu and get your first three meals for free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash adventure. Uh, you're you're going to really enjoy cooking these meals because they taste great and you'll learn how to cook by doing so because I'm a dummy and I've been learning. Again, that's blueapron.com slash adventure. Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Got a few Jumbotron messages to read for you, too. This one's for Joel Ginn, uh, and it's from Maggie the Maggot. That's a fun nickname for Maggie. Uh, Augustus and Lysander, who say, Dear Joel, congratulations on being the kind of DM and friend that warrants well wishes from the Brothers McElroy. Thanks for the great adventures and happy questing for your doctorate in psychology. You'll always have a spot at our table. A person with a doctorate in psychology, and I don't want to, like, cast aspersions here, would have some pretty nasty, like, tricks up their sleeve when it came to DMing. Like, if this person was running the suffering game, I feel like they could really get deep down in that, deep down in that super ego and do some wild stuff. Uh, I have another message here for Universal, who, and it's from Blaze, Vaparu, Blood Ted, Quinn, and Kian and Scoo. And I, I'm going to go ahead and think, I'm going to guess this is, a, this is a D&D group. But they say, To a truly great storyteller, we really enjoyed season one of the Crate and Kobold campaign, and it's very lit for the next one. Thanks for all the fun times, and thank you in advance for gifting Blaze the magical sword Elf Licker, which turns into a dog for 1d6 turns if you want to attack an elf with it. I don't know, it sounds a little OP to me, but... Blaze, Blaze gonna get what Blaze wants. I want to thank everybody who's been tweeting about the show using the, the ZoneCast hashtag. Uh, if you do that, you might end up as a character on the show, like Rowan, polite botanist on Twitter. Uh, Cam, Cam Marshall, uh, Splarf Lord on Twitter. Uh, uh, Lydia, who's hacked motion art. And Edward, who's lumber buns on Twitter. Um, there probably won't be too many more like new characters uh, coming up in this campaign uh, before we move on to the next one. Um, but we still really appreciate you spreading the word. It is the only way that we, like, uh, get more people to listen to us is word of mouth, because we don't pay to advertise Adventure Zone at all, anywhere, at all. So, uh, thank you all very much for, for your help in spreading the word. Um, I want to give a special shout out to the, the Adventure Zone Facebook group. Uh, it is a really cool community, uh, and, uh, it's, there's a lot of fun stuff happening over there. Uh, Matthew and Lindsay are our mods. Thank you both for, for your help in keeping it, uh, keeping it chill. Thanks to Max Fun for having us. You can go to maxfunfun.org and check out all the other great podcasts, uh, over there. They're all free, and I guarantee you're going to find something you're going to like over there. They got shows like Jordan Jesse Go, Stop Podcasting Yourself, Judge John Hodgman, a bunch of really, really great programs. Uh, if you like the stuff we do and you want to hear more McElroy based podcasts, uh, or video stuff, you can go to McElroyShows.com uh, and you can find it all there. We have a ton, a ton, a ton, a ton of podcasts and videos that we do. Um, so go check it out if you want to hear more of us. That is it for this ad block. I'm going to let you get back into the episode. Next one's going to be up on Thursday, February 9th. So we will talk to you then. Bye.
All right, initiative. Uh, I got a seven total. 16 for me. I have, uh, well, 13. <clears throat> All right. Uh, Do you remember the voice? <laughs> this doesn't have a voice. The, the, these two things, weirdly enough, like, they look kind of like Magic Brian and Brian, but they don't, they aren't making any sound. Uh, they aren't, like, speaking to you, and they look like uh, Magic Brian also doesn't have a face. Um, oh. Yeah. Uh, first up is Taco, and I will warn you guys that this battle that I've devised here is kind of a special case in which, like, it's going to move and change in ways that, like, battles typically don't in this game. So, uh, just a heads up. I don't want a bunch of, like, people telling me rules stuff because I'm, this is going to be a, a, a different kind of battle. But Taco, you are up first. I'll just cast Magic Missile as a second level spell on Magic Brian. Okay. What is that in that... Those like automatically it hit, right? It just gives it, yeah. Um, it's one d four plus one force damage uh, as a second level spell. It's an additional uh, dart. Okay, so you hit him with four, four darts. Okay, go ahead and roll it. Well, no, sorry, four, two, three, two. Eleven, four, two, three, two, six, uh, eleven. Yeah. Okay, you hit Magic Brian for 11 points of damage, and with that, uh, the facade that was sort of composing this Magic Brian, uh, you, like, knock it off of him as the fourth bolt hits, and you see that just turn into black smoke that lifts up into the ceiling, and the mannequin, the the, the marionette, uh, falls down and is sort of sucked back into the pile in the back of the room. Well, kind of. Merle, you're up next. Merle, you're up next. You have uh, Brian the Spider in front of you. I cast Sanctuary on Magnus. Okay. That wards Magnus. Any creature who targets Magnus with an attack or harmful spell must make a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, the creature must choose a new target or lose the attack or spell. Okay. Uh, It doesn't protect the warded creature from area effects. Got it. All right, you cast a buff on Magnus. Uh, next up is the boss, the uh, big spider Brian. Uh, seeing that uh, its accomplice was just killed, is going to make an attack on Taco. Uh, and it's just going to. I meant I cast. Nope, it on and it just Taco. jumps forward and uh, tries to grab you with its pincers and bite into you. Uh, 19 versus AC. I'm going to do Yo. protection. I jump uh, in front with the shields. Okay. That's disadvantage. Got it. Uh, 15 versus AC. Now that I do have to check. 19 was a defo hit. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's going to hit too. All right. We need to get you some new pants, Doggo. Mm-hmm. Some thick armored pants. Uh, you get bit for 14 points of damage, Taco. Mmm, delicious. Uh, next in the order is Magnus. Uh, I'm going to attack with my two-handed X. Well, yeah, I'll attack one-handed with the X and keep my shield out. Okay. 18. That is just enough. Nice. Cool. I'm also going to turn it into a goading attack. Uh, okay. When attack lands, uh, superiority dice plus damage, and you have to make a wisdom saving throw. So the damage is eight uh, plus five. So that's 13. And then uh, my superiority dice, I rolled a seven. So you'll need to roll a 20 or better as a saving throw. Plus, yeah, okay. Um, I rolled a 14. I don't think there's anything I can add to that that's going to get me there. So, okay. Cool. So, so now I have to attack you. Of damage. So now I have to attack you, but then I have to yep. roll a wisdom save to even get the attack off. Yep. Okay, that's cool. Wow, you guys are really using your heads on this fight. Well, you know, in my old age now. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, how much damage did you do? <laughs> uh, 13 points of damage. Okay, with that, Brian, the spider, just collapses, and a bunch of those marionettes fall out of him and get pulled back into the shape in the back of the room. And the cloud dissipates and floats up into the ceiling. And then the room changes. Uh, And all of a sudden, the room actually looks like, and this may be kind of a bummer for you guys, but it looks like Phandalin. 
and that smoke comes down and it absorbs some of those marionettes and it's taking on kind of a humanoid shape and all of a sudden standing in front of you is a giant flaming dwarf. Are we talking pre-us or post-us? Well, yeah, it, looks like, it looks like, uh, just based on the scene and the, the big flaming dwarf in the middle, it looks like it's going to be during us. <laughs> um, uh, okay. And Ditto this whole time, True Sight, giving me any insight? Yeah, that's a good question. Your True Sight actually lets you see the red robe, and the red robe is, like, behind all of this, like, behind the pile of bodies, um... And seems to be, like, working on something on the far side of the room, uh, kind of close to the exit door from this room. Um, it looks like he's, like, trying to channel some sort of spell or something. But, yeah, it, the red rope's doing something on the far side of this room. That's what you see. Uh, Taco, you're up. Uh, 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 hold on. Magnus wants to say out loud, hey, hey, fellas, should I circle around, do you think? And I keep an eye on the red robe to see how he reacts. It, he just extends a single finger as if to say, like, wait a minute. I'm going to cast... First off, I want to roll an arcana check. Okay. To see if I have any idea what's going on here. Uh, 17. Um, yeah, I mean, this is just, like, really, really advanced, like, animation magic. Um, the, the black smoke... Like Pixar? Yeah. The black smoke... You have, like, you've never seen anything quite like it. Um, it seems to be, like, uh, uh, instantiating, th- like, creating stuff in a way that you've, like, never seen magic behave before. Um, so it's, like, some combination of those things. Um, but, yeah, you, you understand that these things are being animated and brought to life. There's also some sort of... Um, you, you can feel it now that you've rolled this check. There's something sort of... Um, like scanning you like you feel you you feel some sort of presence in your own mind taco uh that is scanning you and you you intuit that it is like feeding it the information that is showing it like how to transform into these battles that you fought before um when magic brian when the brines disappeared and the the dwarf reappeared were they in basically the same area um yeah more or less like in the center of the room okay I'm going to cast the Hunger of Hadar. Holy shit. What? I'm opening a gateway to the dark between the stars. Mm-hmm. Um, uh-huh. It's a region infested with unknown horrors. <laughs> yeah, you know. You know. Oh, you uh, don't know. A 20-foot radius sphere of blackness and bitter cold appears centered on a point that is basically um, the dwarf's nards, and it's going <laughs> to last for a minute. The void is a cacophony of soft whispers and slurping noises. It can mm-hmm. be heard from 30 feet away. There's no light that can illuminate the area, and it creates a warp in the fabric of space. Yeah. And the area is difficult terrain. Any creature that starts to turn in this area takes 2d6 cold damage. Mm-hmm. If you end your turn in the area, you have to take a dexterity saving throw or take 2d6 acid damage as otherworldly tentacles rub against you. Now the, is that the, level one? Or? The explanation yeah, I'm reading three. says uh, milky otherworldly tentacles rub against milky. you. And I'm wondering yeah, why you didn't read that particular clear. adjective. It was just a little too grody. Yeah. And that's, that's the nasty. hunger of Hodor? Uh, <laughs> that's the hunger of... It's the hunger of Hagar. <laughs> then <laughs> It's pretty horrible. I'll tell you guys what. All right, this, <laughs> this weird black starry field appears on the ground, uh, but they don't have to roll anything until it's turn, right? Right. Okay, Merle, you're up. We're just staring at a big, like, orb with milky tentacles coming out of it. It's like, okay, now we have to do something. I would, I would recommend no one be near that. Yeah, but <laughs> you're, like, you're, you turn, can still definitely that's just battle see battle tips 101. You can still definitely see the flaming dwarf inside of it. I'm going to cast. I'm going to cast Guardian of Faith. And bring forth Angelic Delores. Okay. <sighs> and any creature hostile to the three of us that moves into a space within 10 feet of the Guardian on the first time must succeed on a dexterity throw. The creature takes 20 radiant damage on a failed save, or half as much. On a successful one. So I can't wait till it's my turn to cast Axe. Okay. <laughs> uh, he's, he's summoning Del Reese. He's summoning spheres of milky tentacles. And I swing up. He's a metal on a stick. Uh, 
All right. So Delarice, the your guardian angel, appears uh in in the same space. You guys are just kind of stacking up these bombs uh for for this for this horrible figure. Uh and uh she she appears in the field. One weird thing happens um, where you've cast this spell uh, a few times on your adventure now. Uh, this time when you summon your angel, it takes her like a while to show up. Not too long, but like five seconds longer than usual. Also, some milky black tentacles come out of the orb. No, um, no, 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 no. But, she, she, but she, she fights them off. Okay. All right. <laughs> Cheater. Uh, next up is the giant flaming dwarf who takes 2d6 cold damage. So go ahead and roll that. Four, five, nine. Okay. And then has to roll to escape, right? Dexterity no, it's six. at the end. Of, if it's still in there at the end of its turn. Okay. Uh, uh, it has to do that. Oh, it has to roll a save, right? To For the guardian angel. A dexterity saving throw. This is the dex save for the angel. Uh, 22. What? You have a 22-sided die? No, that's sometimes you add numbers to the numbers in, Dex- in Dungeons & Dragons. Uh, okay. So it takes half damage, so it takes 10. Um, okay. And it is still not down. Uh, and it is going to uh, step forward uh, to try to get away from this this horrible death trap in the middle of the room. And it... Uh, fires off a fireball uh, targeted at sort of the middle of all of you, uh, including Cam. And uh, no! all of you make a dexterity saving throw. No! Uh, I got a 15. That is not going to do it. What Did you say a dexterity saving throw? Yeah. Should be no problem for me. I'll just <laughs> await. <laughs> 13. Nope. Uh, five. All right, so Cam got a nat 20, and I'm not sure how this is even going to work out. <laughs> <laughs> Roll! You he, wanted to be the dungeon master. Um, Cam's, uh, yeah, Cam, I guess, gets uh, just sort of like tugs away and falls off your shoulder, Taco, and rolls out of the, the blast. What did you get, Merle? Five. Okay, uh, and the three of you are surrounded by uh, a wave of flame that hits you. Oh, oh, oh. For 11 damage each. With that, the shape uh, dissipates, and the flaming dwarf is gone. Um, and appearing in the middle of the room, uh, you see three of the marionettes pick themselves up from the pile and wa- start walking towards you, and they are surrounded by black smoke. Um, and all of a sudden you see in front of you, uh, two of them turn into these like grisly meaty shapes. Um, and the one in the middle, you see transform into a tuxedo with a very bright, uh, uh, not a tuxedo, but like a nice red suit with a bright shimmering bow tie. And you recognize them as Jenkins and the two meat monsters. Cam, uh, after being knocked off, uh, Taco's shoulder, uh, he looks up at you, Taco, and he says, uh, I'm getting pretty sick of this. Taco, you got a spare wand? <laughs> Does he even have a wand? Yes, I have a spare wand. Yeah, it's because you're using your umbrella, but you still have your starter wand. Yeah, right. Here you go. Toss it down to me. He catches it. He catches it in his mouth, and he moves it, he moves it around a little bit, uh, and all of a sudden, Cam is now levitating. Uh, oh yeah! And yeah. he has the wand. You could have done that this whole time. We've been carrying your head. He looks over <laughs> at you, Magnus. And he says, "Spell slots," and then he <laughs> he points his wand at Jenkins and the two meat monsters, and he says, "Heads up!"
MaximumFun.org. Comedy and culture. Artist owned. Listener supported. Hi, I'm comedian Emily Heller. And I'm cartoonist Lisa Hanna Walt. And we're the hosts of Baby Geniuses. Do you want to learn weird new facts? Do you like hearing successful creative women talk about their poop? Do you want the scoop on Martha Stewart's pony? If you answered yes to any of these questions, our show is for you. We interview people like Paul F. Tompkins, Kristen Shaw, Michael Che, and more. So check us out on Maximum Fun. And let us mess up your brain. Yes, please. <laughs> I'm Hal Loveland. I'm Danielle Radford. I am Michael Eagle. And we are the hosts of Tights and Fights, Maximum Fun's newest podcast dedicated to all things wrestling. We'll be talking about Sasha Banks, the women's revolution, Sasha Banks, the brand split, and Sasha Banks' wigs. And we'll also be talking about wrestler fashion. Some wrestlers wear too many clothes. Some wrestlers don't wear enough clothes at all. And I'll be doing impressions of all your favorite wrestlers. New episodes Thursdays on Maximum Fun or wherever you get your podcasts. Oh, yeah, dig it. Tights and Fights. Oh, 